So let's do the steps that we talked about on the whiteboard, uh, but in the computer. So let's create a new variable. We'll call it seasonal additive, add for additive. And we will simply, oops, we will simply take our observed data, which is in our time series object, ndvi.ts, and subtract out the values that were calculated using the moving average. And we'll run that. And then let's plot seasonal add. Run. It looks kind of anticlimactic, doesn't it? Some of you are even probably wondering if you plotted it correctly. You'll know it's the correct plot because on the y-axis, the values have changed from that original plot and we now have zero and negative numbers. That's part of that correction factor where you're comparing the observed to the, that mean value. So sometimes your values will be below the, the long-term mean and that'll give you negative values in these residuals and sometimes it's above. We can compare this to the previous one and we can see that it, it looks pretty similar to that underlying black line from before. It hasn't changed that much, which is very unlike that CO2 data where before you remove the trend, you see all you really see is this big increase and with little squiggles around it. And then once you remove the trend, you can start to see that oscillation, that smooth oscillation. That's because in our case, there's not a lot of trend to remove. So let's go back to that graph I was showing before, which has our long-term mean in it. And as you can see, it just kind of squiggles around. It, it's not a lot of value. We're not going anywhere. There's not a big kind of obvious uh, oscillation that's driving things. And so most of our signal is being driven by those oscillations that are occurring at the seasonal scale. And these are regular fl fluctuations um, that, are, that are also embedded in our data. We can do the same thing with the multiplicative approach that I discussed uh, on the whiteboard. And so we'll call this, uh, we'll call this seasonal multi, and we'll just take our observed data and now divide it by um, our values coming out of our moving average. And we'll run that. And then we'll plot that. Run. And you can see it does, it too doesn't look very different. And that's because in this case, we really don't have a multiplicative signal. All right, let's go back to multi. So now we've gone through, we've calculated the long-term movement in our data, we've extracted that signal, and now what we're left with is a time series that combines the seasonal information and that irregular time series data. The next step would be to do the same thing, to model the seasonal signal and subtract it from the data and then what's left over is this irregular movement in the data that can't be accounted for by either long-term movement or signal, seasonal fluctuations. We're not going to do that step. I I've done these steps so far to really help hammer home what's going on in the data, how to extract these things, how to think about these things. But there's actually functions that do this for you automatically, and we don't have to do all of this by hand all the time. So we're going to shift over now to start using those functions uh, to make time series composition a little more easy and fun.